Okay, so on notes 8-3, we're going to be looking at exponential functions um, when we have an exponential growth or decay. An exponential function is a function where x is part of the exponent. So anytime x is in the exponent position, that is considered an exponential function. Okay, so this next part, we're gonna be looking at um, exponential growths. The function y equals b to the x, b is gonna represent the base, and x is gonna be your exponent. It says, if you have y equals b to the x, if b is greater than one, that is considered an exponential growth function with base b. So whatever b is, if it's greater than one, we know that we have an exponential growth function. The general shape is on this graph here. Notice that from left to right, that it's increasing. So it's rising from left to right. That means you have an exponential growth. Also, there is an asymptote, which means it's where the line is approaching but never reaching it. Okay, so the x-axis on this example um, is your asymptote. So this line here, is approaching the x-axis but never reaching it. It just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to that um, x-axis. The domain of this um, function that we have on this graph would be all real numbers. Okay, you can either write it that way or negative infinity to infinity. So whichever way you wanna write that. The range, if you look at your y-axis here, it's everything greater than zero or you can write it as zero to infinity, but it will not include zero, okay? Because that it's approaching the x-axis, but never reaching it. All right, so number one, we're gonna construct a table of values and graph y equals, um, on your notes, it just says two to the x, okay? So we're gonna um, plug in some just test points or x values. I'll start with a negative three. First off, I'm gonna show you how you could plug it in without the calculator. So if we plugged in a negative three for your exponent, remember with a negative exponent, we take the base and that exponent and we move it to make it positive. So we'd only take that two and move it down. So we would have left a three on top over two cubed and two cubed equals eight. So three eighths. And you can continue with that, go to negative two, plug in a negative two, negative one, plug that in but you can also just plug it into y equals on your calculator. So three open parentheses, two to the x power, make sure you raise it to the x power. If you just put x, that's gonna be linear. Okay, and then we can go to the table and find those values. So notice we have negative three is at 0.375, which is the same thing as three eighths. And then negative 2.75, which is 3 fourths of the fraction, and you can write it as a decimal. Negative 1 is 1 1.5, which is also 3 over 2. 0, 3, and 1, 6. All right, so we're going to plot those points on our graph. So we have negative 3 and then 3 eighths, which is 0.375. Negative 2.75, negative 1, 1 and a half, 0, 3, and then 1, 6. Now, when you connect your points, make sure you do not cross the x-axis nor go below it. So connect them and draw arrows. So this is what an exponential graph looks like, okay? This would be an exponential growth because the base was greater than when it was 2, also, from left to right, it's increasing. So those are the two different ways that you can determine if it's a growth or a decay. All right, a way that you can figure out what your y-intercept is, is if you were to plug a zero in for x, why would that y value be three, which is the coefficient? Okay, so let's look at it. If we plug in a zero for that exponent, which is x, that part would be one, so really all you're putting is that coefficient there because 3 times 1 gives you 3. So that's a way of finding your y-intercept when your exponential function has just an x for your exponent. Oops. A 
before the finish for that page. So looking at the bottom, what happens to the function, which is your y values as the value of x's increase? You can either look at the graph or look at your table. As your x's are increasing here, notice that your y values are also increasing. So y increases. Okay, so let's look at the back. This time we're going to be looking at exponential decay. So when you hear the word decay, you should think of going down, getting smaller. Okay, so the function y equals b to the x. If your base is in between 0 and 1, then that will represent an exponential decay. The general shape, it looks like this graph here. Notice it looks similar to what we had on the front, except from left to right, it's decreasing. It falls. Okay, so it's decreasing from left to right. Notice the asymptote is still the x-axis. It's still approaching the x-axis but never reaching it. The domain, if you look at your x-axis, it's continuous this way and this way, so it would also be all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. And then the range is the same exact thing as the front. Y would have to be greater than zero or from zero to positive infinity. We'll not include zero though because that's your x-axis and that's where our line is approaching but never actually reaching it. Okay, um, the next part we're going to do a second example. Notice this time our base is one half so it's in between zero and one so we know that we have a decay here. So you can either plug in your x values if you don't have a calculator or plug it into your y equals and look at the table. Maybe 1 divided by 2. Alright, so notice when x is negative 3, your y goes off the graph. So I'm going to start with negative 1, 6, 0, 3, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 0.75, and 3, 0.375. Alright, so let's plot our points. Notice these values are the opposite of what they were on the front. Okay, because our base is not 2, this time it's 1 half. So, we're going to plot those. Negative 1, 6. 0, 3. Notice your y-intercept is still at 3, because when you plug in a 0, you still get 1, and then times it by 3. 1, 1 and a half. 2.75 and 3.375. So when you connect your points, remember it doesn't cross the x-axis, nor does it go below the x-axis. So look from left to right, notice that it is decreasing. This would be a decay. It says what happens to your y values as the x's increase. Look at your table or the graph. As x's are increasing, notice the y values are decreasing this time. Okay, so in this next part, it says in the exponential function y equals a b to the x, a is going to represent your coefficient, and then b will be your base, and x will be your exponent. If your base, it says if b is in between 0 and 1, your y values do what? as the values of x increase. So as x increases, your y decreases. Because that was like number 2. Our base was in between 0 and 1. This will represent a model of exponential decay. A way that you can determine out from the graph, look from left to right, it should be decreasing. Having that same function, except if the base is greater than 1, we know the y is going to increase as the value of x increases. This is an exponential growth. Alright, so if we look at the back, we're going to classify each of the following exponential models as either an exponential growth or a decay. So we're using y equals a, b to the x power. Okay, a, remember your coefficient, b is your base. Alright, so on, number, or on part a, your a, which is the coefficient, 
There's not one, so we would need to put a one, because we could just put a one in front of that five and it still gives us the same answer. Okay, the base on this one is five. Looking at your equation to determine if it's a growth or a decay, you're looking at your base. Our base is five, which means it's greater than one, so therefore we would have a growth. Looking at part B, your A would be one, your base would be 0.4. Since our base is in between zero and one, that would be a decay. And then C, A is your coefficient, so eight. B is your base, which is 0.25. That would represent a decay because your base is in between zero and one. And then the last one, A is 4, B is 2.5. Now notice we get a decimal on B, but B is still greater than 1, so that would represent a growth. So an exponential function, we either have an exponential growth or a decay. We can look at the graph by looking from left to right. If it's increasing, that would be a growth. Decreasing would be a decay. If you look at your equation, if the base is greater than 1, that's a growth. If it's in between 0 and 1, that would be a decay.